welcome to the Mighty Dragon. And with me today is Pierre Bordeaux, a French actor based out of Beijing. Hello, Pierre. How are you? Hi. Perfect pronunciation, by the way. <laughs> I, I hear you've been working on that, <laughs> right? Very good. I've been pra practicing my French friend, Anna, uh, left me some voice files, so I just didn't want to embarrass no, I... myself. So, <laughs> let me hear it again, please. Pierre Bordeaux. Perfect. That's great. Really? Oh, great. Yeah, yeah, really. Mm. <laughs> Great. How are you? Improved. I'm not too bad, thank you. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for joining me today. I really wanted to know about your journey from France to Beijing, where you, you live now. And tell me uh -huh. a bit more how you got into film there. Um, it's a little bit by accident. I mean, um, when I was a kid, I've, I've, I've always wanted to be an actor. But since I was young, people have always told me, you can't be an actor. That's not a real job, you know. <laughs> so uh, I had to do other things, you know, study hard and all that stuff. And, and at one point I got really bored with my studies. I was studying like uh, international trade and stuff like that. And I was like, no, that's not for me. So I told my parents, uh, I was already like 18 or 19. I was like, no, that's not for me. I, I'm going to do something else. And, uh, and I started studying Chinese because for me at the time, uh, I was doing martial arts and I was always uh, kind of, intrigued by you know Chinese characters and all and I was like well maybe I should learn that that in that I actually I could be um, interested and then I studied I started uh, studying Chinese and came to China and uh, you know I, after a couple of months here uh, people from uh, TV actually came to me and they were like oh you can speak Chinese you know we have a TV show blah 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 and you know I, all of a sudden I was an actor in China amazing and the rest is history <laughs> how long have you been there for almost 20 years now 20 years yeah, it hurts oh to gosh. say that though <laughs> 20 <laughs> years oh I was young flies. when I came here and it, have you always been in Beijing or have you moved around yes yeah yeah because mm. my wife's from yeah. Beijing and uh you know she's very attached to the city and her yes. family and all that stuff and and actually me too I, I love Beijing I love being here Yes. Would you say mm. that there's more opportunities for you right now in Beijing than there would be in Europe or the States? Oh, definitely. Yeah. As an actor, yeah. Uh, because, you know, just being a white face, uh, you already get uh, noticed in the in the streets and people come to you and go, oh, do you want to be an actor? Pretty much. You know, it's uh, I mean, it's not that easy, obviously, uh, but it kind of was when I first came here in 2002. Right. Uh, yeah, you people would would see you in the streets and and they'd be like, oh, a foreigner. I've, I've never seen that before. And yeah, they would come to you and uh, and and talk. And uh, yeah, that's how you know I got TV people come to me and say, oh, you you can speak Chinese. Come to our TV show. Blah blah blah. You know. <laughs> so yes. it's definitely easier. Yeah, as a foreigner here. Okay, you're listed on IMDb as an actor, a director, a stuntman, a voiceover artist. What's your mm -hmm. preference? It's hard to say. I mean, uh, I think in terms of what I can do really well, I think acting is the best thing. Yeah. Maybe because uh, I mean, I've directed before, but I'm I'm not. I don't. I wouldn't call myself a director per se. I've, I've directed a short and you know a couple of other. Uh, small videos but uh, I couldn't call myself a director um, I I do a lot of voiceover and I enjoy it um, and uh, stunt work I don't do it as much anymore because you know I'm 42 now and uh, I used to be young and it was fun now I'm not young anymore and it, it hurts it, yeah. <laughs> it's really painful <laughs> yeah do you know what I, I recently watched Jackass Forever and I just wondered uh -huh. how much that hurts them now <laughs> they did these guys are crazy <laughs> yeah and Johnny Knoxville still kind of kind of does it I've, I've met him once yeah. I've, I've worked with him on a on a on a film before and he yeah he's crazy <laughs> yeah I think yeah just have to have a slight bit of crazy there I'm gonna have to read this out so I apologize you shared mm -hmm. in Facebook recently um, an interview of yours in which you speak fluent Mandarin. How uh -huh. many languages do you speak and has being multilingual opened more doors for you? So I speak French, obviously, uh, yeah. 
bit of English, a uh, bit of Chinese. Uh, I mean, those three languages I'm pretty comfortable with. Uh, I can still speak a little bit of Spanish, which is not so much different from French. So I can yeah. still understand it, but because it's been a long time, I've forgotten a lot. Um, I can also speak a little bit of Russian, but uh, that was only for a role that I worked on it. And now it's, I mean, it's still there, but I can't have a conversation. Uh, and I, I can speak a little bit of Korean because I wow. spent a year over there. But yeah. uh, in terms of how many languages can I really speak and have a conversation, a decent conversation with people, I would say, yeah, French, Chinese and English. Right. And it's, it does help here to, to be able to speak Chinese. I mean, it's not only that, it's, I think it's a must. Uh, if, if you want to work in China, if you don't speak Chinese, it's yeah. just too hard. Yeah. How long did it take you to learn Mandarin? I'm still learning. It's still <laughs> it's a lifetime just, process. It's hard. It's really <laughs> hard. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, to be able to have a conversation with someone, I'd say it took me about at least three years. Yeah. Uh, to be able to understand and, you know, um, but still, I, I I still make mistakes, and you know that my tones aren't always always right, and uh, it's it's uh, it's a work in progress. <laughs> it oh. takes a long time to learn a language, and the thing I, is, yeah. by learning other language, you kind of forget your own language. I, I I don't speak French as well as I used to because I I've, I don't speak it as much as I used to, and now it's some of it is gone. Yes, my my husband <laughs> says the same about Welsh. He had a Welsh education, right? and he's forgotten most of his Welsh now. I was like, How is that wow. possible? But I guess <laughs> if you're in a different country, just permanently speaking that language, then it's quite easy to forget some of the words. I guess definitely because your, um, your brain kind of switches and, and yeah. I read too on your face. Sorry, I have been snooping around on your Facebook page. Oh, that, <laughs> a French <laughs> guy dubbing in Mandarin uh -huh. a British guy who speaks Cantonese in a Hong Kong movie <laughs> and I said here I assume these bizarre pieces of work are quite common for you are they uh I mean th th that was a bit much I mean there was like uh, definitely all all kinds of nationalities <laughs> involved in that but yeah in, in voiceover I've, I've done voiceover in Chinese in English in French uh, I've done a bit of Russian also uh, for a TV series. Yeah. I had to speak Russian for that. Um, yeah, in, in voiceover we come we come across a lot of different things, and uh, even animals. I was a I was a goat in a in a in a cartoon, and I had to be meh and I had to do the, the voices. Yeah, sounds. It was fun though. I I, I really yeah. like doing cartoons. Mm. Sounds good. With your experience of the Chinese mm -hmm. film industry. What do you see are the real strengths? Mm, I think they have everything they need to, to compete with Hollywood now here uh, in terms of filming, uh, what, what they have, you know, in lights and cameras and, uh, you know, what people can do. Uh, I think what they still kind of lack in a way is uh, maybe uh, in, in post-production, I can still see, uh, you know, that they're not totally there, and and also, uh, yeah, script writing, uh, writing stories is still a little bit, you know, um, I don't think it, it it's as good as uh, what we can see in, in Hollywood nowadays. But they're really, I mean, it's incredible how fast they're they're making progress here. Uh, when I came here again back in two thousand and two, it was. A lot of what we sh shot at the time was like, oh, you know, it was yeah. pretty bad. And yeah. within a couple of years, they really made some awesome movies. And then also animation. Uh, if you look right. at uh, uh, Noja, uh, for example, which is a, a cartoon that I really, really like, it's definitely it could totally compete with uh, what Disney and Pixar produce nowadays. It's really, really good. So, you know, it's uh, yeah. As an actor here, it's uh, it's great to see that because you see the the whole industry evolving, getting into something uh, very very decent. It sounds like you joined just at the right time to see all of that mm -hmm. evolution uh, take place. Um, so from TV series through to film, what's been your favorite project so far? I don't think I could choose one because uh, I have favorite projects, but for different reasons. Uh, if I had to pick one, I'd say probably Chinese Zodiac, because it was my first time working with Jackie Chan and, you know, I had been right. a, a fan my whole life and being on set, which was a, a, an, an unbelievable set. It was like a jungle with a 
with a boat, uh, with a ship actually in the middle, like a pirate ship. And you're in that studio and you're like, wow, you know, it's already amazing. And then Jackie comes to you and goes, hi, I'm Jackie. This is my show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, I was a bit starstruck at the time. Yeah. But then, you, you know, you get into the, the work mode and, and, and it's all, uh, it, it was amazing. And um, the level of, of, of uh, filmmaking that they had at the time it was also amazing. They really went like into you know, Hollywood mode where everybody knew what they were doing and it was, it was a great experience. Now I have other great experiences, of course. Like I, I was uh, uh, on a Johnny Mo movie uh, the, uh, last year and uh, I really liked that one. Not so much for the filming, which was amazing by the way, it was great and all, but because we had to go through boot camp to uh, portray that because we were playing soldiers right mm -hmm. and we had to do uh, a whole boot camp thing and it was amazing we, we and I was also working with friends uh, so a bunch of actors were like kind of a band of brothers and it was really really fun to go through this experience because it was it was hard it was cold it was tiring you know you name it but it was also uh, you know I, I have no bad memories from it at all Fantastic. And in terms of your career, where do you see yourself possibly behind the camera in the future? Or I would love think? to. I mean, I love directing. Uh, yeah. A couple of years ago, I did. Uh, so I, I, sh I shot one one short film for a 48 hour film festival. Uh, that was the, the Way High Film Festival. And it was my first time directing. And uh, same thing, you know, it's a, in 48 hours, you have to come up with a script, shoot the film and then edit it. And uh, so it was a lot of, you know, problem solving and a lot right. of, uh, uh, you know, some difficult stuff. But I enjoyed the process so much. I was like, wow, this is great. And we won. We, we got best film at that uh, Amazing. festival too. So that was, that was a big, you know, maybe I might do a bit more of that in the future. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I like I, I like writing also, and I like also editing and and uh, you know voiceover. I, I I just like filmmaking. You know? yes. But I think being an actor is uh, what makes me the the happiest when I'm you know portraying different people on on screen. That's that's so much fun. You know? Yeah, I was gonna ask you as mm -hmm. in in your stunt work, what's the most craziest stunt that you've done? Um, well. First of all, as a stuntman, I've never done like crazy, crazy stuff, you know, like <laughs> jumping off a building or yeah. you know being on fire or getting hit by a car or stuff. Which I know a couple of people do that, and I'm uh, totally in awe, you know, because yes. these guys are great. I, most of the things I did as a stuntman was fighting, uh, sometimes maybe getting hit by a horse, being on wires and and stuff like that. Um, uh, I've had one particular uh, experience where I was actually scared on set um basically okay so here's the setup uh, i was i was a uh, stunt double for sebastian vettel uh, who's a, a formula one driver and yeah. came to shanghai to shoot a commercial and basically uh there is a, a platform on which they have like tons of uh, sandbags and everything it was really heavy and it's hanged to a crane by a by a, a rope and the rope is about to break and there's people underneath it and so the, 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 the main character was supposed to jump over a lake and then uh, or, or get on the other side, push these people out, uh, and then the, the crane, I mean, the, the rope would break and the things would fall on the ground. And hopefully they wouldn't be uh, squashed by it. So the stunt, it was me. <laughs> and uh, so we do it once. I push the guys out of the way. The platform falls down. You know, it was wired so they, they could time it. Right. And the, the action director at that time, Ian, if you're, if you're looking, if you're watching, you know, how are you doing? So Ian is like, um, it wasn't close enough. Can you, uh, can you do it again? So we do it again. Eh, not close enough, not close oh. enough. And every time I'd have to get out of the way and I would hear and feel because you, the, the platform would hit the ground and the ground would shake because it was really heavy. Uh, and I was like, how close does he want it to be? And they would, they ended up, uh, we, we shot like about 15 takes, I think. And on the 15th take, they actually dropped the platform before I rolled. And it really, it was that close to squashing me. Oh my God. And, and I was like, wow, that, that was scary. And I watched the footage and then I started shaking. I was like, okay, that was really, really close. <laughs> and what's weird about that is that 
could, I could have been scared for my life. I was more scared of what my wife would say if I got hurt. <laughs> if I get hurt, she's going to be so pissed. <laughs> so that was kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think I've been, I've done stuff that, that really scared. Oh, no, I've been scared on other things, but not for me. Uh, for example, the first time I had to fight with Jackie Chan, uh, it wasn't really a fight per se, you know, it was like a huge battle scene. And I was the first one who was supposed to run towards him with a spear. And and I was shaking because I was like, I, please, God, don't let me hit him. <laughs> don't let me hurt him. <laughs> I was really, really scared, you know. Um, you know, if he, hits, if he hits me, it's okay. You know, you, you can even give me a scar or something. It's, it's like, hey, yeah, Jackie Chan did that. You know, it's, it's yeah, cool, yeah, but yeah. you don't want to give him a scar. So that was kind of scary. Yeah. Oh gosh. And what does the rest of 2022 hold for you? It's going to be very disappointing. Uh, <laughs> nothing so far, and it's mainly due to COVID. Uh, yes. I mean, we're pretty much in lockdown now here in Beijing. Uh, it's it's coming, you know. Yeah. So yeah. all the projects that uh, were in the pipeline are on hold for now. I mean, there's still a little bit of uh, dubbing here and there, but so far, I'm. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I know COVID has sent our lives into such turmoil, hasn't it? So it has, yeah. I mm. just wanted to wish you all the best for the rest of this year. Thank you and very thank much. Thank you so much for coming on the Mighty Dragon. And please come back on and oh, thanks for having update me. us yeah, on all definitely. your projects. <laughs> thank you, thank Pierre. You. Speak to you soon. <laughs> Bye. All right. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for Pierre Bordeaux for appearing on the Mighty Dragon. See you soon.